Welcome to Tech Brothers with Amar. In this video, we are going to learn how to use filter activity in Azure Data Factory. So, why we would like to use the filter activity? Because uh, you can use a filter activity uh, in a pipeline to apply a filter expression to input array. So, think about that uh, you have an array and that's returning you multiple values, and you would like to uh, filter them and uh, create some branches out of that and uh, then uh, probably you know uh, load the data to some uh, other destination and all that so wherever you need to use filter on an array this can be very helpful uh, let's learn a scenario in which uh, you will uh, explain the details of how exactly this filter activity is going to work so in this video what you're going to do you're going to learn tons of things you're going to learn the get metadata activity you're going to learn uh, uh, filter activity you're going to learn uh, uh, for each activity you're going to learn copy activity and uh, you know there would be other stuff as well or you will learn through it so first of all let me explain the scenario here I have uh, a blob storage and in the blob storage uh, we have containers so one of the container is containing some files uh, so input container right there you see customer file customer Asia customer, customer Asia customer US uh, and then we have sale uh, files uh, so let me open one customer file and show you what it has. So if you go right there, it has ID, it has name, it has file name. These are three columns it has. And then there is only one row in this file for the data. Same thing uh, in the next file, I have uh, same column names and then just one row for the data. Let's go to the sale amount and take a look. Here we have a person name, sale year, sale amount and sale uh, sale month and sale amount so these columns are different and also if you notice that these are tab delimited file so the one i was showing you before customer one that was the comma delimited so what is our goal we would like to read these two type of files uh, there could be another file sitting here just maybe let me upload another file uh, let's uh, go ahead and uh, there could be some junk file sitting there you know maybe nest json this uh, you know so we don't want to care about anything else but any file that has name customer and that has the name sale amount so that's what we would like to load to our table so i have created two table depending on the definition so if you see right there i'm going to take the definition and show you in the notepad so you will have a little right there okay according to the uh, definition of the uh, of the files See, remember that I have created a customer file table with ID, name, and file name. And uh, for the sale amount, I have created a person name, sale year, sale month, and sale amount. So these are the two tables I will be using with this definition of columns. So we have already created those uh, tables here. If you select the data right now, um, we don't have any data. Now let's go back here and uh, what we are going to do, you, our filter activity is going to help us uh, to filter the files uh, what we want to read from the this uh, input container. How is going to help? Uh, let's uh, take a look and load the files. So now we go to the our Azure Data Factory. In the Azure Data Factory, we are going to go to the author and we are going to go to the pipelines. Add a new pipeline and then we will start getting the list of the files. So to get the list of the files from the container, we can use get metadata activity and uh, go to the data set and here we have to provide the data set I'm gonna go to input and my files are sitting in Azure blob storage so I'm gonna type that and uh, get uh, Azure blob storage uh, you can get uh, text delimited that's fine and uh, now what we have to do we have to create a linked service so I'm gonna click new and then select my subscription select my storage account and I can call it uh, uh, TB storage okay and create uh, so this is our connection to the storage. We don't have to select, uh, yeah, let's select the container actually in which our files are. So they are in the input container and we do not have to select the file because we would like to read the list of all those files. Now, first row has header, doesn't really matter and all that. That's all we need here for this. And now what we can do, we are gonna go to the field items sorry field list and here we are going to select a child item that's going to give us the list of all the items available in our input container and as you know that those are our uh, files uh, right here so that's fine now what we will do that once we have the list of the files uh, we need to 
filter them because we would like to load them to two different tables so let me debug and show you how exactly get metadata is going to get this, get us a list and then how we will use the filter next time to filter the records into two branches here uh, we can click on the output and uh, once you click on the output you can see that child items that's an array and uh, then uh, we have uh, all those uh, file names uh, sitting right there there's uh, the get metadata return you uh, uh, two uh, properties the name and the type so if it is a folder then it will show you folder but in our case we have all the files okay so we have to get these uh, list of the files uh, according to the customer and uh, then we have to ignore these guys and we need to get the sale amount uh, uh, file names as well okay so first of all i'm going to get the filter activity here and in the filter activity uh, i'm going to name this one i'm going to call it customer filter underscore customer so we would know that uh, this is our for our customer so i'm going to connect this guy and go to the now click on filter go to settings and here i have to provide uh, the item so if you see there that's uh, the array i have to provide so I'm going to go click right here, add dynamic contents. And then here I will select get metadata activity dot child, uh, child items. Okay. So that's uh, our array. Okay. So we are good here. Next, so what we have to do, we have to provide the condition. So if you remember that we have the name and if the name contain customer, that's what I would like to uh, uh, filter and I would like to get those values only so I'm gonna go to the add dynamic condition here and then uh, I'm gonna say add the rate uh, contains and then uh, uh, I will provide a item dot name comma customer okay so in this case uh, what happened uh, item right here and put the parentheses right there so this is the expression you will be using now see at the rate uh, contains so and then you are saying in the item uh, use the name and say if uh, it uh, has a customer so any if the item has name co contains customer that's where it's going to return us the true so i'm not doing exact match because uh, uh, my file names uh, have a different name in convention so if you see right there uh, my files that customer us customer and even maybe sometime i have the file that has uh, anything starting at the at, at the start of the file so if you want to use just a starting so you can start with the function but i'm using contain to find out my files so that's good and now what we are going to do we're going to hit ok here and uh, that's uh, all we need here next uh, what we are going to do we are going to get to another filter let's get another filter and now we are going to filter the files for our sale uh, amount now we go, go right there and uh, i'm going to name this guy i'm going to call this one filter underscore sale now go to settings in the settings we have to provide the array here so that's going to be our get metadata dot child items okay so that's our array and here is our condition so we are going to go at the rate contains and then we are going to say item dot name and we will say comma sale amount let me see what it is it is sale amount okay so we will put a sale amount Okay, hit okay now we are all good we can go ahead and execute that and take a look at what it returns our pipeline has been completed successfully get metadata activity test let's take a look so this guy returns us a customer 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 and then we have uh, some extra files sitting there for json and all then we have sale amount now let's go and click uh, on the output of uh, file uh, filter customer and see it is a uh, it they're just telling us there are so total seven uh, uh, items but they are filtered for three so there are three customer files so customer asia customer asia and customer us now if i go to the output for the sales it is only returning me two out of seven so anything that has sale amount see right there so these are the two files that we have so this is working good now what we need to do we need to read uh, these uh, files and write to the sql so i am going to use for each here if you guys see that each filter is returning a list of the files so it is returning more than one file so we have to loop through so i'm going to get this guy going here and i'm going to call this uh, for each loop underscore customer okay so we will remember that now we can get another for each loop here and then connect that to the our sales so i'm going to call this 
40 just go sale now this is good and uh, what we need to do here uh, right there in the for each first of all we are gonna go to settings so in the setting what we have to tell from where to get the list of the items so right there click there and add dynamic contents and now as you see that filter customer has the values so we are gonna click on filter customer dot value so how did I get that part dot value so if you go to the output here and click uh, sorry output uh, right there click anywhere on the white canvas and you see that so click uh, output here see right there that's where I'm talking about so filter dot customer dot values so it's gonna give us uh, these uh, items so it's gonna give us uh, customer uh, file names and uh, type so we'll use only file name in the next iteration now for the same thing for the our uh, sales we go to settings and here add dynamic contents and uh, we will say filter sale dot values okay so we have the list of the files in the for each loop for each of them now we have to work inside so we are going to go to the first of all customer and uh, click right there and uh, inside that what we have to do we need the copy activity okay so we bring copy data and now we have to create a source in the source we are going to click new and our source is azure blob right so go to the blob storage new yes it is a delimited file yes now we are going to create uh, we are going to use the link service tb storage and uh, which container we are going to browse to input container and uh, we don't have to specific for any file here because our file will be coming from the for each loop iteration and uh, these file will be anyways ignored and this will be ignored as well only these file will be coming uh, to this uh, copy activity so we hit okay we don't have to uh, provide file name here click uh, first row has header yes and uh, then we are good here now we need to map that file name to our copy activity source so click on open and here uh, what I'm gonna do I have to go to the uh, parameters and I'm gonna call this one customer file name okay in the customer file name I'm gonna go back to connection here and then I'm gonna use that uh, parameter I just created now where this uh, value uh, will be mapped to the customer file name so I have to go to back to my pipeline and see this uh, parameter is showing up right there and I'm gonna go to value add dynamic content and the value for this parameter is coming from the for each loop customer right so our for each loop that's a customer for each and uh, then we are going to say name that's where our uh, file name will be coming okay now that's good what we have to do next uh, uh, we have to do the sync part so we are going to go and uh, here our azure sql db click right there and then now we create a new link service and we go to the subscription server name and my database name techpress db and i have to provide username db user and then i have to provide the password and uh, we are going to test test successfully and I can provide the TB SQL okay so that's the name now create and uh, here I have to tell the table name and I'm gonna uh, load this files to the customer because we are working on the customer for each loop right there so we don't have to do anything else it's gonna auto map the columns because the column names are exactly the same so we are all good here now what we are gonna do here we are gonna go to the other uh, pipeline sorry uh, we are gonna go to the other for each loop here so let me see if uh, I have right there so this is our sales so click uh, right there let me make this small here click on the pencil icon and now we are gonna go to the bring another copy activity and here uh, we are gonna go to the source in the source we are gonna go new Azure blob storage and then in the blob storage uh, yes command limited files and then we are going to go link service tb storage and here yes it has uh, the header go to the container input container select the input container and now uh, we know that our header has the files right so we are good here we don't have to select the file name because only sales file has to come through the for each loop iteration so we are going to hit uh, ok and then now uh, we are going to go back to the our connect data set and do the same thing so we need uh, to map uh, the file name 
with the from the coming from the for each loop iteration so i'm going to go create a data set parameter here and uh, i'm going to call this guy sale file name okay now i'm going to go to connection use this uh, parameter here sale file name and then uh, what i'm going to do i'm going to go back to my pipeline and here i have to provide the value for that parameter and that value is coming from the for each loop right so i'm going to go right here and our for each loop is right there for each loop sale and dot uh, name right so we are good here and uh, this is going to work just fine we are going to go one more thing we want to do is go to the data set again and if you remember that this file is the uh, tab delimited file so the customer files are uh, command delimited but this is tab delimited so we have to tell in the source so this is a tab delimited so instead of comma delimited i'm going to select a tab delimited rest of that uh, things are going to stay as it is now we go back to our pipeline and here we go to the sync again and now we map to the final table so azure sql db and here click and then we select our tsql tbsql that's our uh, link service and here we need to select uh, the table okay sale to amount table is there we don't have to do any mapping as i said that the column name in this input files are exactly what are in the table so we are fine we and we are not um, um, ignoring any column and anything like that so we want to load all the data okay so we are all set here now our pipeline looked like this so, so it uh, let's go ahead and debug so it's going to get the list of the files in get metadata activity then uh, in the customer filter it's going to get the customer file names in the uh, sales filter it's going to get the sales amount uh, uh, file names and then uh, they will be uh, going to the for each and then for each loop is going to trade through loop through each of the file name and load uh, uh, to the tables so right there if you see that's uh, how the uh, flow is so get metadata got us all the list now we filter them you know uh, this customer got three files okay you can see right the name and the sales got two files okay there are some other files sitting there we, we ignore them because we use the filter here to get only sales files and customer then they go to the for each loop and for each loop knows that there are two sales uh, files and customer uh, for each know, knows that there are three customer files and then they are executed right there so your first uh, is executed then second and all that so inside the for each loop you can see right there there uh, loop through those list of the files and the data should be loaded let's go to the our sql and uh, take a look so if i run this uh, select start from customer tables you can see that uh, there are three records so these are three records came from the three different files because each file had only one record now we can go to the uh, sale amount and run it and uh, this is all data loaded from uh, those two files so you can also add the file name columns to the tables and then add extra column in your uh, 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 copy activity so if you go right here go to the this guy and then uh, you can always uh, add extra columns here so let's say additional column right there and then i can add my file name so i can use uh, the file name variable to add the column names so i have the videos on that if you want to take a look on that one so this is how you will use the filter activity to filter the list of uh, uh, filter the values of an array according to your uh, requirement and then uh, you whatever you want to do with those uh, values uh, you can do it uh, and here we were uh, to filtering those values and then loading uh, according to the uh, those uh, file names uh, to different tables in our pipeline thank you very much for watching and i will see you guys in next video